The Pan-African Parliament has been sitting this past week in Midrand, north of Johannesburg, and of course it will continue until the end of uh, this week. It's resolved, resolved to re-elect Cameroon's Rajan Kotodang as uh, the president of the Pan-African Parliament. South African MPs have attributed Dang's victory to divisions within the continent along the Francophone as well as the Anglophone lines. But ICBC a reporter Ntakwa Nangatani has been following the developments at the parliament very closely and she joins us now in our studio. I'll see you later. Thank you so much indeed for coming through. Let's just talk about what I made mention of on my introduction, the issue of francophone and anglophone lines. Your observations, you were there uh, the entire week last week. Well, if the election of the president and the vice presidents is anything to go by, yes, we saw those divisions. Mm -hmm. But um, there are people who uh, deny that that is so. But when I spoke to a long-time member of the parliament uh, who returned uh, this session, and that is a DA member, Santosh uh, Kalian. Mm -hmm. She said to me that, in fact, the Anglophone in the parliament feel like they are the opposition, and the Francophones feel like the government, the government yeah. in, in that parliament. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there is that issue of uh, the president coming from a uh, Francophone country, mm -hmm. but also the fact that uh, he is very popular. Uh, in those uh, regions and in those countries. Now, the, remember the Pan-African Parliament has five regions, northwest, um, south, east, and central, and he comes from the central. Mm. So the fact that he went campaigning to his region, he went to the West African countries, which are mainly Francophone, and he was able to get quite a, an overwhelming majority, mm -hmm. and some say that um, there are those divisions. And we know there are allegations of uh, nepotism and corruption uh, leveled mm -hmm. against him. Let, let's just focus on this, uh, uh, the person, Roger Ngododang, who mm. is he? We don't well, know that he comes from Cameroon, but who is he? He is a member of parliament from Cameroon. Okay. And he first became a vice president of the parliament from uh, 2012 to 2015. And then, uh, the, at the time, Nigeria was the president of the parliament. He then uh, became the president from 2015 to 2018. Now, he is the first president. Remember, been, he was the fifth, he was the fourth but he is the first president of this parliament to seek a second term. Mm. And because uh, the membership of the parliament is based on being a member of your national assembly, people are now saying, why would you want to continue being a president of the Pan-African parliament when uh, this is sort of like a ceremonial uh, a position, if you like. Mm. Uh, but the fact that he has even gone to countries uh, to campaign, um, apparently he went to 31 countries to campaign in three months, and this is another thing that's been questioned to say. Uh, he says that he used Pan-African Parliament resources to go and uh, convince countries to sign or ratify that protocol that gives the parliament legislative powers. But how do you separate his role as a sitting president and a campaigning president? Yeah. So these are just some of the things um, that now uh, the Rules Committee or at least members of the Rules Committee say there should now be a forensic audit to find out the usage of funds in the parliament and whether in fact he used those funds to campaign and lobby for the parliament or he used them to campaign for himself. Yeah, and we do know that Julius Malema is not very happy with this president. He's called him a corrupt president. This, of course, uh, did not sit well with some members of the Pan-African Parliament. Well, he went as far as saying that South Africa is the host and South Africa is one of the biggest funders of the Parliament um, could go as far as uh, withholding its funding. He, he says that they want to uh, interdict Parliament to withhold its funding until um, Godo Dan can account for his term in office. And you know that South Africa provides the seating of the parliament, and that is the venue at Gallagher Estate. You know that uh, right now there is the issue of his house that South Africa has provided, but he hasn't taken up because perhaps it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And we understand that he is uh, living in a residence somewhere in Pretoria that costs about 80,000 rand a month. And these are just some of the things uh, that members of parliament from South Africa are saying no. And the other thing is the issue of the rules. We know that the third vice president uh, was elected but didn't get an absolute majority, 93 votes, 128 votes were spoiled, but he went ahead and appointed the third vice president. So uh, then he went ahead and then said he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the things that uh, members of parliament are saying, well, it shouldn't continue as it is. All right. So uh, let's just look forward to the week it is, the week ahead. What is
is expected to happen? I mean, you made mention of the fact that there are now calls for a forensic audit of the parliament itself. We do know that uh, the budget for the council is set to take place on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Yes, not just the parliament. In fact, the African Union, because one of the functions of the parliament is to look at the budget of the African Union. And the question is, if the parliament itself cannot account for what, for what it's doing, mm. how can it oversee uh, or be an oversight body for the union itself? So the, uh, the, the, the budget of the union will be presented by the deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, that much-anticipated activity report of the president and the bureau is expected to be mm. presented. But again, the issue is why was it not presented, first of all, as the rules say, on the first day on of the plenary, first day, yes. but also what reasons in, were his, provided in, in his term, yes. because uh, this, this the report be belongs to the previous term, and it's now being presented by a new bureau mm. that's coming in. So the other issue is why do they even have the power to present that report? The reasons that he advanced, one, uh, first he said that the clerk had not completed the, the report and the clerk said no. I completed the report and then he said no, my bureau didn't form a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, there are five members of the bureau, it's himself and four vice presidents. But... Uh, the reason that uh, there were the two other members of the bureau were not uh, allowed to go into that meeting is because, as is going to happen to him now, when you go to election in your country, you're no longer a member of the parliament and therefore no longer a member of the bureau. So um, two members were, had gone to election and had to be, one of them had to be re sawn in. But there were still three members of that bureau. So the rules committee says, you had a quorum. You should not have yeah. said that you didn't form a quorum. Sure. You should have adopted that report and presented it to Parliament. So these are the reasons that he's giving. The clerk has said, I want an investigation because mm -hmm. now my name or my office has been mentioned. And as the head of the secretariat, I also feel that um, an investigation should be carried out so that I can also clear my record and my name. It's going to be a very interesting week. I Absolutely. Thank you Absolutely. so much for coming through. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, SABC reporter and Takwana Ngatan, who is following the Pan African parliament but uh, as we said it's going to be a very interesting week we'll keep in touch with them let's take a quick break you on morning live when we come back